Hey everybody, on this episode of the Emerald City After Show, we're breaking down season one, episodes eight and nine. Lion in Winter and the villain that's become. Plus, we have a special guest, Mito Homada, a himself, in studio with us. Let's do it. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Oh, I like that. Let the buzz begin. That's right, yes. That's nice. Hey, everybody. Listen to a little thing here, courtesy of Mito right now. Welcome, everybody, to the Emerald City After Show. Of course, we're breaking down every episode this season of Emerald City. It's airing on NBC. Uh, but we also have a special guest here tonight. We'll introduce him in just a moment. I'm one of your hosts, Frank Moran. You can follow me on Twitter at Happy Go Jackie. And I, I was going to say, end. I'm like, I didn't know if we were going to oh, go, we'll you go know, down, down the far we'll, go, we'll go back. Yes. There we go. We'll loop. Hey, guys. My name is Carrie Lane. You can find me online at Carrie D. Lane. That's K-A-R-I-D-L-A-N-E. And, uh, yeah, we are live in the chat. So if you have any questions for our special guests, feel, feel free to write that. And then if you're watching this later, comments, you know, because we like to read them. That's right. Now, of course, our special guest. You can see Carrie and I every single week, but this is a special occasion for Yay. us here. Yes. Uh, now, our guest tonight, you may know him from shows like uh, 24, Homeland, NCIS, Hawaii 5 and more. But more importantly to our concerns here this evening, he plays Amon on Emerald City. Ladies and gentlemen, in studio with us tonight, we've got Mito Homada. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I like that introduction. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Nice. Well, so, we like having you here. Oh, thank you. you know. thank there you go. And as Carrie mentioned, uh, you can like us on Facebook, give us those five stars on mm -hmm. iTunes, subscribe to mm -hmm. the YouTube channel. Uh, and she said, hop in the chat if you have any <laughs> comment, questions for Mito as well. Uh, we'll be talking to him about the show, his life. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to chime in on the chat. Uh, Freya already says that I am lucky to be sitting next to you. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I feel I lucky. Think you, I think you got it all wrong. I'm I'm the lucky one because uh, I get to sit next to this lovely lady oh, and, and uh, this handsome, very guy. handsome oh. fellow. Yeah. He's just <laughs> strapping, nah, strapping. Yeah. You struggled yeah. on that one. You struggled yeah. on that one, Mito. That's okay. I'm not gonna, that's all right. <laughs> did I, uh, it came it came out too slow, did it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Mito, I guess you know, the first question we'll ask you is: there's, uh, uh, How did your involvement become uh, get started with Emerald City? Mm -hmm. Um, just regularly, I, I auditioned for the part, uh, read the script, auditioned for the part, saw the breakdown, and uh, was lucky enough to get it once Once I sent in my tape. And, and uh, I actually auditioned for a different part, and then they... they Which uh, one? No, I can't say that. <laughs> I auditioned for a different the part. Wizard. No, Dorothy. No, no, Lucas. Dorothy. It was, it was, it was Toto. Nah, Toto. Uh, yes, I man. auditioned for Toto, and they didn't like my this take. This close. Uh, this yeah, close. Yeah, it was close. It was close. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and so then they, they called me back hmm. for Eamon, and, and, uh, and I was like, hell yeah. Now, were you a fan Had you uh, of the source material? Had you seen the movie, read any of the books or anything? No, I had not read any of the books. I knew about the books, but I hadn't read it. And so I, like everyone else, had watched the Judy Garland version and, mm -hmm. you know, was semi-familiar with that, but hadn't really seen it since I was a kid. And since me being a kid was a long time ago, I, I didn't really have it in, in my mind. So when I when I then saw the scripts, it was really my, my first time of being confronted with the material. And, and then we were very fortunate because we got all 10 episodes straight off. Mm -hmm. oh, so I was able to read from episode one to all the way up to episode 10 and literally in, in two days I would just read it through and, and I was like I was hooked oh wow and nice. it was one of those things because it was actually so well written that you kept finishing one script and immediately wanting to read on because you wanted to know how the story continues mm -hmm. you know? now this is certainly a different approach from the the film and the, the material oh, a little bit of a different yeah. spin on that I wouldn't say the material necessarily. Uh, I mean, it is a little bit of a different spin on the material, but it's very different to the movie, mm -hmm. for sure, for sure. Yep. But it's it's more it's more it's closer to the books than the movie. Yeah, because we're seeing. I mean, I guess you're know, making those associations. Like, I mean, since I've seen the film and not read most of the books, but you're thinking of those interpretations of the lion, yeah. the scarecrow, and the Tin Man. Yeah. Uh, so what? Yeah, normally you think like, oh, it's a cowardly lion. Yeah. Uh, Amon is certainly not a coward. From mm -mm. No, he's he is and he he's not. I mean, I, to explain to 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 the listeners and the viewers why he's cowardly, uh, I would have to say that you have to watch episode ten, and then that will be explained okay. what the cowardly uh -huh. act is. But uh, as we get to the the main one of the main differences is that everybody kind of becomes their characters in our show. Okay. So <coughs> in the, the the original movie, you start off with Tin Man already being Tin Man, the lion is a lion, and everybody is who they are. In our show, you have to wait five or six episodes before Tin Man is revealed. You have to wait eight episodes before you know who the cowardly lion is. And Scarecrow is revealed, I think, in, in the first episode. But 
So that's a that's one of the different takes of it. But in terms of why is he cowardly, it's um, that shall be revealed in episode yes, ten. Yes, uh, I understand that. <laughs> but uh, given the luxury of uh, having all ten scripts up front, yeah, that gives you a chance to be able to kind of set the way you want to play the whole arc as a pie, absolutely. finding it out at week mm-hmm. by week yes, by week. Yes, absolutely, and and that was incredibly helpful because you 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 know I was able to sit down with Sean Cassidy and David Schulner and Tarzem, the director, um, the two showrunners and the director and kind of hash out what the arc of the character is, you know, based on the scripts that we have and, and kind of make up the backstory from there and understand who he really is, what his cowardly act is, how that drives him. So while the audience may not know what he's done, he knows the entire time. Mm-hmm. And so he's carrying that with mm. him the entire time from the first episode all the way. And I think, you know, th- there's I can talk about the shift of Eamon. Eamon kind of shifted once we get to see him in his own home. Yes. You know, once you get to see him with his with his daughter, and once you get to see him with his family, then you, everything changes. Once his relationship with Rowan Lucas gets explained, we get to see him in a in a different light. Whereas before, he's this kind of uh, he's this machine. He's a warrior that kind of does the, the wizard's bidding, and he has to he has to kill off magic. That's yeah. that's 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 his thing. No, and that's the one thing. Oh, go ahead. Uh, we do have a quick question from the chat. Dream Queen says, "How was it like wearing the lion's head?" Oh, it, yeah, th- it was very heavy, um, but it was it was actually quite amazing, you know, because they have to, uh, it's not a real lion's head. Um, that would be terrible. <laughs> um, so they they made they made it, they measured it um, and made it so it fits me perfectly, um, as well as the 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 thing that I'm wearing that looks like a, a hide. Well, mm-hmm. that actually is a hide. It's a deer hide, though, not a lion hide, but it's a deer mm. hide. So I'm wearing a big hide on my back and this big, heavy head. Um, and it's kind of a little bit tricky to move in because you, you can't really move your head from side to side mm. like that, but you have to kind of move the whole body. So in the sword fighting sequence, that's a little bit tricky. But um, let's face it, I'm wearing a lion's head. It looks really cool. <laughs> it does. You know, Did it you? looks really cool, and it was great to wear it. And, and, and you know, who doesn't want to wear it? Lines yeah. <laughs> uh, in the last or in the episodes where we see Ozma's past, did you do the slicing or was that stunt double? No, no, that's me. All right. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I, I I do all the killing. <laughs> that's right. Nobody, so I, I need to feel out. it. I need to feel it and go yeah. all method and go. Let me do the killing. You know. No, I I did that and and I love kind of sword fighting and all that kind of stuff. That's that's uh, right up my alley. I, I enjoy that a lot. Um, because you get to, to have a chance to talk to the stunt people and, and um, you can devise something that you come up with together and, and mm. between the things that you already know and what they bring to the table, you can come up with something that's really nice. But as Carrie's mentioned there, that, that act right there of killing Ozma's parents really sets, uh, it really changes the, the future of mm-hmm. Oz for yeah. quite a while. Yeah. For, for that. And so, I, you know, so far we've just seen bits and pieces of that, certainly through Ozma's perspective. Yeah. Uh, is, are, is episode 10 going to give us more of the story and the context for that? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So in, in, in episode 10, what's going to happen, um, I can say this much, there, there'll be a meeting between Ozma and the lion. And that's Ooh. about it. Oh, all right. So, so that's all I'm going to say. And, and, and I think it, everything will be explained. Okay. In in that moment, and and the the backstory uh, will be understood. It'll be understood why he is uh, cowardly, mm-hmm. or you know, and and how that fits in. Because so far we just see the lion, we don't see the cowardness, but we will figure that out. It'll it'll be shown. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be shown, and please don't hate me. <laughs> now, it, it is interesting reading this, and I was talking to Carrie about this a little bit earlier. Is that interesting for this? I feel like coming into the big finale, the season finale here. I don't know if I'm really rooting for. I don't know if I'm a big fan of anybody right now. I think that's the way life is, though. Don't you think? No. Like, like you know, what, one of the things that intrigues me about about it is because normally you have clear-cut characters. You have the people that are on the dark side of the force, and you have people that are on the good side of the force. Well, in Oz, everybody's in the gray. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. and and I think everybody is a hero and a villain in 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 some ways, and everybody's doing something that's not quite down the right track and the right path and I think that's what makes every character so compelling to watch and uh, all, all of them you know I mean West is a phenomenal character and you can't but love her but she's constantly screwing up mm-hmm. right and the same goes for, for for Tip you know she she didn't mean to push Jack down but now Jack's become half man half machine because of what she did so all everybody has done something and the same goes with the wither, wizard and the same goes with Glinda and Lucas and you know especially with Lucas and, and Dorothy 
they, they all are constantly faced with challenges and issues and all always, always have to make a choice. And the choices they make, they make are not always, you know, the best ones. I don't know. I'm Team uh, Ozma and Witch of the <laughs> West. I'm like, okay, let's have them like go kick some ass. And yeah, like, and they they do. They do. <laughs> I, I, again, I can say they are going to kick a lot of ass. Well, there's certainly a lot of pl uh, players in place to have yes, a really yes. uh, ex a, a really cool. That chessboard finale. got full real fast. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. And well, that's the, I think the beauty about a show like that is because uh, y you have so many great characters to follow, and, mm -hmm. and each uh, and, and you trying to, trying to see and find out how these characters intertwine in their storylines, and 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 that makes it very compelling. And and I think the writers have done a really tremendous job because the source material is 14 books. Right, so to be able to get ten scripts out of there and, and manage to do that and, and adapt that and, and hopefully maybe go into an even a, a second season should be be lucky enough to get that is fantastic, and that wouldn't be possible without great writers. Well, it's interesting too, just the approach with this with the wizard, and because Oz is, has been mentioned so many times that Oz is a land of magic. Yeah, uh, and then we have the wizard coming in and kind of exerting more of a scientific bent on this land that has been well, so magical he, for so long. Because he doesn't have any power over magic, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm wondering, is just trying to figure out the balance? Because ordinarily you would think like he's trying to impose his will and his viewpoints on a land that doesn't want to do that. <clears throat> so is he the bad guy? And the way that the witches are reacting to this is not necessarily making them the way they're reacting because of this. They're not seeing the best parts of their character either. I, I think, again, <clears throat> I don't think there are any bad guys. Just really? Like, you don't think the wizard's a bad guy? No, I, I don't. Ooh, I, yeah, I, don't. I, I agree with someone in the chat. They said, uh, Freya says, I just want the wizard to die at this point. I'm uh, with you. I am. I'm ready. No, no, no. I can't. Well, <laughs> He's your I'm boss. A, I'm, I'm first of all that, and I'm also attached to Vincent. Yes. So I, like, I, I like Vincent a lot. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. I, I, I love him, actually. And, and I, I, no, I don't. I, I think, uh, you know... I think the wizard certainly does a lot of bad things, but intrinsically, he's a very weak man, yeah. you know? And, and weakness is not a, a villainous character trait. It's just a trait, and he's weak in character, and he's trying to cover up his weakness by trying to outlaw the one thing that he cannot control, which is magic, and the one thing that would, you know, question his power. And the witches have powers that he can't compete with. He's not the only, he's not the one who, who made the, uh, the stone giants move. And he knows that, and, and Nahara knew that. And that's it. Nobody else knew that, apart from the witches. Because uh, it's uh, just the way that he comes back over to the, uh, trying to get his guns. Yeah. Uh, the, and the gold. Uh, yeah. That, that was, man, he's just not a great guy. Just the fact, even coming down to Jane, like, do not call mm. me Frank. Do not remind me of my I past I am the life. Wizard of Oz! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say it one more time. One more time. We were kind of wondering what happened to her, and I don't think we connected. <laughs> were we talking about that? Someone else brought it up as a comment, I think. We're like, like dude, what happened to the other girl? That real and then we're yes. like, and Jane, this lady. Oh, they're the same person. Yeah, she's been around for several. She's been there. Yeah, she's yes. been around. Yes. We didn't really put two um, and two together. In the chat, someone has the Emerald City as their username, and they said, "What uh, do you think you can relate to your character in any way, and what is your point of view on your character? Oh, gosh, yeah, absolutely. I can totally relate to my character. I think um, my character is a family man, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. You know, he has, a, he has a wife, he has three kids, and all the choices that he makes are based on them. And we will come to find that out, obviously, in, in episode 10. But I can very much relate to that. I can relate to him uh, being a warrior, just just from a perspective of my life and what I've gone through. And so there's a lot of correlations when it comes to that. But obviously, I, I live in the real world, and, and magic doesn't exist. <laughs> but, um, well, it kind of does. <laughs> yes, no, let's let's leave that one open. I do believe that magic exists. But, uh, but yeah, I have... A, I have um, a lot of similarities to Eamon and and uh, he wasn't somebody that I needed to uh, research heavily to get into because there's it's all on the page really and, and mm. so I was able to kind of to just go with what's on the page and my imagination and and then there were there were, you know um, <clears throat> Tarzem and uh, Sean Cassidy and David Schulner uh, were really great in allowing all of us to kind of bring something to the table and so for me it was all about the look you know, so I, I don't have the long hair. 
uh, in case anybody noticed. <laughs> so oh, you have a beanie right now. You I have could a beanie. Be hiding I could it. be hiding it. That's probably That's why right. I wore it. Yeah. <laughs> he takes it off, <laughs> and it all comes out, and I'm doing a shampoo so you're commercial. Charlie's yes. Angels, yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so yeah, so they they. So wait, uh, is that your hair then in the show or uh, no? Extensions? It's a wig. It's a wig. Okay. That's a wig. Yeah. So it's a it, you know the the makeup job that we did it's and good the wig, hair. Then. Yeah, it's a great wig. It's they um, they did a fantastic job. And so I I really wanted the long hair for this character and and, the, and mm. some of the makeup stuff that we've done and and they were really open to it and 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 uh, let, made it happen. And I think it's a it's a good look for him. And so you know. I do feel like I can relate to Eamon quite a lot. He's mm. a very flawed human being, as am I. So, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Are you are, are you flawed too? I, I'm, I'm I'm riddled with flaws. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because I got so many flaws. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> now, getting all ten scripts up front. Did you shoot all ten sequentially, or did you kind of shoot bits and pieces at the same mm. time for each episode? Absolutely insane. We shot a ten-hour movie. We Oof. shot a ten-hour movie. So on my first day, I was shooting scenes from episode ten. Oh, interesting. Wow. Which was insane. Then it's good you read the whole thing. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It it was it was a it was probably one of the bigger challenges that we had is to mm. constantly know where we were at in the story because the the reason that that happened. Let me just explain that to to everybody is Tarzan, who was our is our phenomenal director. He he wanted to use as little CGI as possible. So what we needed to do is to travel to all these beautiful locations before we then went to our base. Mm. So we started shooting in Barcelona and in five, six other different locations in Spain. Then we went to Croatia to a national park over there and, and filmed over there. And only then did we go to Budapest where we had the studio, where mm. we had the sound stages and where we started shooting in and around the area of Budapest in the forests and so forth. Wow. So that means for the first month and a half that we were traveling and we were like this wandering circus going from country to country. Um, we were shooting all sorts of stuff from all across the 10 scripts. Wow. wow. So, you know, one day it's episode six, one episode two, one ten, you know, and only once we got, you know, back to, to base, so to speak, which is mm -hmm. in Budapest, Hungary, were we able to be more a little bit more sequential. But even then, it, it wasn't very sequential. How long were you uh, out shooting this whole production? <clears throat> Seven months. Wow, man, it's impressive. Yeah, it, but it, you were exhausted. <laughs> I, you know, yeah, we were exhausted. But it, this is an incredible bunch of people. I have to say, everybody from all the departments to all the people, the producers and the director, and more importantly, not a more importantly, but the actors. All mm -hmm. of us really came together as a, as a group and as a unit. And I don't think you know I've been doing this for a little bit, and I don't think I've ever come across that. Not like this. I think we all, everybody's so in love with The Wizard of Oz, and we all felt the burden of that, and mm. we wanted to do the best possible job that we could possibly do, um, and to just do it justice. And uh, you know, hopefully, the audience feels that, the same that way. And and uh, we, it was a labor of love for every single person involved. Now, as somebody that is, you know, was uh, born in Africa, you know, spent some time in Germany, spent some time in London. So, it's your first time spending a, a length of time in Budapest. Yes, it was actually. Yeah, I, I had I had kind of traveled most of Europe, and I and I'd shot in in a lot of different European cities, but hmm. I always meant to go to Budapest, and I'd never had a chance, just privately or work wise. So to be able to stay in Budapest for five months, we were there for like wow. four to five months, was amazing, and I, I couldn't have asked for a better city to be, uh, you know filming in for five months because it has so much to offer it's a wonderful city if anybody ever has a chance to go to budapest go the food's amazing the people are lovely and and the baths are great <laughs> <laughs> and with five months, it really gives you a chance to really sink in and yes. really get uh, understand and appreciate uh, the culture. Yeah, and to get a get a grasp of the culture. And and you know how it is when you when you when you go with with film people, you have so many people around it that you know take care of you and stuff. And it's like it's one of the couple of perks to the job is that you always have people telling you where to go and giving you tickets and showing you the best spots and things like that. And and that is true. That is a perk. And uh, we took full advantage of that. Yeah, of course. Why I not? I hope you did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it, it, like I said, if you do go to Budapest, it, it, you have to go to the baths. That's what Budapest is known for. And they have all these hot thermal baths that from all these springs that come from, from under the ground. And, and that's what it's known for. And they are phenomenal. Nice. Uh, as somebody loves to eat, what is one thing that you had there? Like, you even still think about uh, today, like, man, that was a good thing. 
I tell you what, I have eaten things in Budapest that I had never eaten before. And because I like to just try stuff. And, and, and uh, so the thing that I remember most is I had guinea fowl um, with goose liver. Mm. Oh, wow. And they had a pear on top of it. So it had a whole bunch of different flavors, and it you think it wouldn't work, but it kind of did. <laughs> you know, guinea fowl, goose liver, and pear really works. Who would have thought? <laughs> Certainly not me, but yeah, I had that. That's something that I still remember. I'm not sure I'd eat it again, um, but it, definitely worth trying. <laughs> goulash, is that in? Yes, that's yes. that's Budapest. Yes, I had goulash a few times, and yeah, that's their national mm -hmm. uh, national dish, and it's very good. Very, very good. Now, you mentioned Vincent D'Onofrio. Yes. I mean, so uh, in terms of just probably the person you probably... Absolute have, legend. Yeah. Uh, closest relationship in the show. Like, how did, uh, in terms of approaching uh, Amon's relationship with the wizard, did you mm -hmm. have a lot of discussions about that? None whatsoever. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No. Uh, uh, we just showed up. We came from, you know, two different chairs. We'd get up, do the scene, sit back down. <laughs> 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 you know, we didn't have... You know, we talked about a lot of things. Um, life. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our children and, and all sorts of things, but we never really talked about the characters. We kind of mm. discovered it on scene. Well, nice. I mean, I guess is, is that a, a fun way to be able to approach it where like, you both know that we're, we're going to bring our best to the scene so we can just spend our time when we're not uh, yeah. just, just talking about other things other than the project? I, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, it just never came up. You know, I don't know if I'd have, I'm sure if I'd have asked him a question, you know, regarding the characters, I'm sure we would have been able to have a conversation about it. But it wasn't, it, neither neither one of us felt the need that we needed to talk about the scenes. Um, so, and I've been in, in other situations where, you know, actors really want to. And so it's not really something I like to do, but I, I only do it if the, my colleague is, is, you know, asking for it. Mm. Yeah. If I'm not asked, I won't. Because I feel it takes a little bit of the discovery away, you know. Sometimes you, it's it's nicer to go into a scene and to discover stuff together. And if you hash everything out, it becomes an intellectual exercise. And I'm I'm not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> did you actually do table reads for all ten episodes up front yep. before you took off? Yep, we did it uh, five hours and two days. Wow! All right, so Oof. five five episodes, two days. You know, so five episodes on one day, another five on the other, and and that that was an amazing experience, by the way. I tell you what, I I, I still, if if we're talking about moments that you remember during the course of the seven months, the read through was the first big moment, and and it was because we we all sat there, and I had a look around the table, and I felt like, wow, so this is Oz, mm. and before because I talked to the producers about it and they didn't do it on purpose it just kind of happened this cast is so diversely cast it's absolutely amazing they have done a phenomenal job in casting this from people from all around the world if you think about you know Mistress West is played by Anna Uluru who's from Romania you have me playing Amon you have uh, Mistress Is who is from Uganda you have um uh, Swan, who is half Chinese. You have Isabel, who's from Australia. You have people from all around the globe res representing Oz, which to mm. me was wonderful because, you know, we're representing the world. And, and you don't notice it until we're all sat together in a room, sitting, you know, reading this wonderful story and sitting at the table. And you kind of look around and you see all these wonderful faces from all across the globe. And you realize, okay, this is special, you know, because I've never seen it like that. Now, if we're looking at the, uh, the, the, the kind of the uh, the, the archetypal, and, uh, how can I forget? Sorry, Dorothy being a Latina. I mean, that, that's the biggest. <laughs> that's the biggest one right there. Sorry, Adria. <laughs> I was like, I would never forget you, sweetheart. No, no way. Uh, I, I'm hoping because I feel like there's such a. I, I still don't quite have my head wrapped around exactly what the gauntlets do for Dorothy. Uh, and the abilities that she can manifest with them. Mm -hmm. uh, do, will the 10th episode kind of answer some of those questions? Well, it, it, it's like this. Um, Tip has the spells of Mistress East, and Dorothy has the gauntlets. They do different things. Simple as that. But mm. do you need both of them together to com complete the set? Like, both of them are you kind need, of... You need both of them com complete together to complete the set, and... 
hopefully we'll know and find out more about that in season two. Mm, all mm. right, I got it. Because uh, there's something with, with the three characters. If you're talking about the the scarecrow. Well, yeah. the other thing though too is Ozma at her. With all the other witches, did the two different spells that mm -hmm. they go? That's typical of that family, though, because she did the um, like blast. They said like the oh, sound wave, blast, yeah. yeah, and something else, and they were like, "That's part of that family." So, oh, trans oh yeah, the, uh, the the I think it was the memory base, thing. They yes. said base magic. Yeah, yeah, it's base magic. It's so, nothing special. But that's what I mean. Of like, she inherently has that too. B besides what she. Acquired. Yeah, well, she she didn't have anything until she, you know, like uh, um, Tip says, drinks East's insides, yeah. right? So until then, she has zero magic. But then, would the where did those spells come from? Because those weren't uh, which of the East spells. I think they were. Okay, the way that yeah. I don't know the way I heard it is more like it proved her family lineage rather than like oh you got magic. Oh, okay, no. I don't, I don't, yeah. It's just more you have particular magic that you are worthy? Yeah. I'll take that, I th sure. I think so. I think so. I think it must, because she drank East's, uh, yeah. East's, East's spells, and so she has the capacity to do all those things that we saw East do in the beginning, mm -hmm. and she, you know, and she's control of the prison of the abject, etc., and, and all that kind of stuff. And Dorothy has the gauntlets. That's, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I think, uh, yeah, I can't answer that question. Uh, I like yeah, how she I looked. Like, I liked how they changed the like crown of her yeah, hair. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, so. yeah. She, more, more to come of that in the next episode well, as well. Yeah, because I feel like the only other thing that she had had done was when she had been transformed. Uh, oh, she changed her sex. Yeah. Yes, but that was like that spell, the the, the serum that she'd been given that kind of suppressed that back before. Well, she when became, she changed it back again. Yeah, but then she did it on her own. Yes, she and kinda, then that's when Wes was like, "How'd you do that?" Yeah, what's going She's on? She's like, "I let it happen. <laughs> that's what I do." Uh, so for the three characters, though, I feel like for uh, with Jack, our Tim Woodsman, and uh, Rowan slash uh, uh, our, our Scarecrow, we've yeah. gotten no more of them. I feel like Amon's the one that has had the least amount of information on this. So, uh, I mean, I guess we have the 10th episode, as you said, that kind of reveals some things. Mm. But I feel like his character, is, it was just a choice that he's going to be more of a slower build compared to the other two? Absolutely, yeah. But I think there's only so much that you can you can do in, in 10 episodes and in terms mm -hmm. of the time constraint of what you can fit in into to any kind of 40-minute, um, 45-minute episode with commercial breaks. <clears throat> and I think that, that his storyline would probably um, be picked up a little bit more now that we know who he is, mm -hmm. you know, because also part of it is is not wanting to reveal to the audience until episode eight that he's the cowardly lion. So at that stage, you know, one of the challenges that 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 I had as as a as as the actor playing him was to not give anything away. So the entire time you're playing this really cold-hearted person, there's no no moment for me to show the different side to him so until that moment reveals itself. In episode eight, and I think the reason we decided to use a slow a slow burn like that is just to a to let all the other characters breathe, which is really important, um, but also to not give anything away. Because if you show his face all too many times, we, you kind of get to really go, okay, well maybe he's the lion. But we thought you were for a no, while. you did not. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't you. It was the okay. Wait, he had the li there's the lion the way back yes, when where yes. he's like, yeah, there's lions out here, yes. and then there's a couple there's, other. There's moments. three. There's three three giveaways. So for the audience members who want to go back and have a look at it, the first giveaway is when. Um, the soldier wants to go and kill me and I come back and chop them into pieces and go the lions did it. Yep. <laughs> the 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 bit before that is when we stop the the circus mm -hmm. and I walk past the lion in the cage and kind of pull the pull the the, the tarp back and mm -hmm. you see the lion in there. And then the third reveal is the fresco in my house of a lion hunt. And so all of those are the hints. <laughs> that we dropped in just in case. <laughs> yeah, because it was, a, you bring up the point, like you really get to see a Amon softening up when he does bring uh, Rowan to his house. Yeah. That is definitely a, a time where it just it seemed like such a switch because at the end of the previous episode, when he confronts them in the woods, you're thinking like, oh, this is not going to be good yeah. whatsoever, given what we've seen already of him. Yeah, and, uh, but Rowan is somebody who he's got so much history with. You know, obviously Rowan doesn't remember. But Eamon does, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and Eamon says it to him. He's like, you, you know, you're my best soldier, you know, the, the best guy that I trained, the guy that, 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 you know, 
You're supposed to take over from me. That's what I what we groomed you for. And so he's got this big storyline and this big history with, with Rowan that Rowan doesn't even recall. He doesn't even remember. He knows nothing of. And so trying to get him to remember and and show him. So when we were playing the scenes, it was really important. Everything was coming from, from Eamon, and Rowan's kind of going, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're playing against it, but don't you remember? No, I don't. <laughs> but it's interesting because we learn in this uh, the last couple of episodes, Glinda removed his memories of her... But then why are your memories gone? Why are his memories of you gone? I, th I think all the memories are gone. All, okay. all, all his memories she are gone. She took he, too he, much. Yeah, he, she took it. No, she, she blocked everything. Okay. So when he wakes up, or literally, and, and Dorothy kind of pulls him down, he doesn't remember any, anything. He doesn't know his name. He doesn't know anything. Yeah. He doesn't understand why he's got a sword or, you know, why there's a red handle on his sword, which gives out his rank. And he, he yeah. knows nothing. So he has no. She clue. did her spell too well. She did. Because she's like, a yeah, she's damn supposed to spell. remove my me your memories of me, which is a good idea. Yeah. But it's like, oh no, I made you completely <laughs> clueless. Okay, yeah. whoops. Wouldn't you like to have that spell? No. It's like would. Eternal Sunshine, Spotless I, Mind. No, I, no, no. I would love that spell. It's just like, yeah, forget everything, start all over again. No, start, it's, start all over but again. But then you might just do the same thing again. That's true. That's true. That and you like, might. Ah. But but in Lucas' case, he didn't. You know, Lucas turned into something completely different. There's a huge shift in, in the story yep. between who Lucas is and who Rowan is. Mm -hmm. And so given the same circumstances, would that's the question. Would Lucas do the same things and the same choices that, that Rowan did? Well, we can you guys that. still be besties? Time will tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, uh, is, Time will I don't think anybody is besties, to be honest. <laughs> no, I Oz, know, does, Oz doesn't strike me no. as a place where where besties really exist because everybody's got an agenda and everybody's yes. following that agenda. So, uh, like I said, I think we're all operating in shades of gray and, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, besties certainly don't exist. Well, you just seem to care about him so much more than just his, your lead soldier that he seems more like a friend. Yeah, well, again, I think the reason for that is is soldiers spend a lot of time together mm -hmm. you know and and he, he it was not the you know first time that he came into my house because my my daughter immediately recognized who he was and and so mm -hmm. that that goes to show that he's probably spent a few evenings yeah. in my home probably drinking with me and and, and doing whatnot and and you know who knows yeah. so and then and then of course there's the bond of battle mm. you know guys go fight together it's a very bonding experience and mm -hmm. and soldiers you know they, they've got a lot to share there yeah Carrie, you know, it's like we do these after shows together. We've bonded oh, so yeah. deeply. We yes. have so many shows. <laughs> uh, Aurora in the chat says, LMG, is that the guy who plays the lion, the wizard's right hand? He's gorgeous. Ah, uh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank, it's that. calling it's, you guys out if you say it. Thank you, thank you. That 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 is the uh, the hair, the lion <laughs> hair, and the mask. I look really good in a mask. That that's that, that's the first thing I usually try and ask. That you know, when I go in, I say, "Can I have a mask, please? Uh -huh. <laughs> Can I have a mask? Cover everything up." Well, apparently, your uh, description of really pointing out how well the cast is diverse uh, helps one of our viewers here. They said, "Raul said." Uh, I may start watching this show now. Seems pretty interesting. Glad the cast is mixed. Absolutely. Well, glad you're joining yeah, us glad now. Glad you're on joining now. <laughs> hey, listen, better late than never. Mm -hmm. You know, go watch all eight or nine up to this point, and and then watch the next one mm -hmm. next week. Uh, well, uh, as we're talking about Lucas, the beginning mm -hmm. scenes of this episode, episode nine, just with Lucas and Dorothy, mm. uh, incredibly tense. Yeah. Uh, I was there when they shot that. Really? Yeah. I yeah. I went straight to location because I didn't want to miss that. It was one of those things. I had the day off. And uh, I knew what was on the table, and I'm like, all right, I got to see what they do with this. And and so I went over, and they were just amazing. They were amazing. I mean, it was great on screen, but it was even even more amazing to watch it happen. Mm. They they did a, a really brilliant job playing those scenes. That, now that's them. a sign of a cast that really enjoys being around each other, exactly. even on your day off. Yeah. You still want to come and see how people are going to pull their scenes off. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what I was saying earlier. I think this is a a, a very unique experience for all of us, and I think we all. We all bonded with the material and with, with each other and wanting to do the best possible take that we could. Um, and so it was very normal for us on our free time to go and watch what the other guys were doing, you know, because you wanted, 
also because you wanted to see the sets because you know like a lot of times you know you'd you'd find out about oh we're shooting this but i have nothing to do with that but i want to know what it, the witch's den looks like you know <laughs> i want to go to the brothel i never spend any any scenes in the brothel but i spend a lot of time there oh do you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, that's fun like you guys are just like i want to go watch their other scenes yeah, and yeah. so do they come and watch yours and like everybody everybody kind of does it yeah i think uh i think there were a few there when we shot the first lion scene um Fine. you know so yeah so definitely I, but but i think that's just normal when when people support each other and want mm -hmm. to and, but also we're in a in a different city and we don't have that much to do so <laughs> might, might as well go see what the other guys doing yeah <laughs> there uh i mean tarsum as you're talking about him him and john and david did such a great job of really differentiating the the three witches that we see mm -hmm. or, uh, the witch of the south i mean we don't really get to see what her no. realm was like but no. the other three just uh such a distinct different appearance to all of them uh, and the way that they approach magic is so interesting and unique. Very much so. Now, as we're gearing up towards the season finale, uh, the wizard, Frank, has made a promise to Dorothy uh, that he can get her home. Do you feel like, because Frank has been such a huckster this whole season, do you, th does he really have a way? I don't think he can get a way. He doesn't know a way to get back to Earth <clears> from <throat> Oz. He's Oh, well. Okay, lying. that's all right. Say no more. Well, the lion <laughs> should tell us if he's lying. Yeah, that, <laughs> oh, hey, oh, hey, all right, okay, yeah. Well, like, the, li the lion says, I don't know. Okay. Um, I think, you know, Dorothy's mission from, from the get-go has been to get back home. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's all about for her. She wants to go back. Um, and I think her mission is still the same in episode 10. You know, and and you you know tune in, and you'll find out whether she gets home or not. Now, I, one question I guess from the pilot episode, or the first episode, we see Dorothy's mom come yeah. back like twenty years prior yeah. uh, with the baby, and kind of yeah. leaves her. Does is she still on Earth for that twenty years? Has she been kind of hiding away from Dorothy, or does she actually come back to Oz and has spent time on Oz during that twenty years? Or is that something we can't know the answer to yet? All will be revealed. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Fine. Just, I'm not listening. I'm, I'm not. I'm <laughs> really. Understand. I'm not trying to nope. be no, any mysterious Fine. about it. No. But actually, so much stuff is going to be revealed in the last episode, especially when it comes to Dorothy's origin story. And and uh, I think you should really tune in and watch it because it it's it'll blow your mind. Awesome. I was gonna say uh, real quick. Someone had talked. Dorothy is such a pivotal character lately, and she's gone through some uh, changes and uh, someone uh, Dream Queen says and I agree I'm like this scene was awesome uh, and can we just talk about how savage Dorothy was when she basically was about to kill Glinda in her own sheets yes visually oh, that was scene. like yeah what yeah. a creepy way to do it! Yeah, right? I thought that was amazing. If you ever want to get back at someone, <laughs> it's like that's the way to do it. I'm just gonna wrap you up in your sheet and choke you to death. Yes, mm. yeah, impressive, impressive. I think again, it's Tarsum. You know, there's also that beautiful moment where West is in the brothel, mm -hmm. and the sheet goes up, and Glinda's face goes into sh into mm. the sheet, and, yes. and she talks, oh, okay. and yeah, they, they like communicate. That. That's such a great scene. You know, a great scene, great effect. Sheet callback. Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, I think you know it's back to uh, Tarsem and and all the, the the visual effects guys. What kind of amazing job they did, mm. and uh, just to come up with that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, because that's certainly I don't think that was in the script. No, I don't think it was. Not like that. I think it's a they, creative they, way to yeah. kill someone. Yeah. Let's you know we've seen so many people kill people on screen. I don't think that's happened. Yeah, and not <laughs> just like you know a noose wrapped. It was yeah. like the whole body. The whole thing. Like, oh. I, it was amazing. It's like this being wrapped up in this cocoon and then picked up and just slowly suffocated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The way that he does, like we're uh, back way back when Wes was interrogating Dorothy, when Wes is being yeah, subjugated yes. by the fellow witches. Just the way that he depicts that, where they're levitated and they're kind of uh, almost like bent in half sort of yeah. backwards mm -hmm. or do you remember when when east was playing with uh with dorothy and lucas when mm -hmm. they were yes. on the ground and she was just sitting there talking to him and flicking her fingers like mm -hmm. that and it's like come on how good was that exactly. what i like i that bring us back to that first episode the way that east deals with the gun but there's somebody that has no context for what a gun is capable of or what it even does yes uh such an interesting way to isn't that great because yeah. only a witch can kill a witch Right. Yeah. So good claws there. Right. Only it's a like, witch. Ah. Only a witch can kill a witch. So she got run over by a car. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Right. Dorothy tried. Nothing happened. But turn the gun around, point it at yourself, pull the trigger, and you will die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Because you know what the the secret is is that if Dorothy had pulled the trigger, nothing would have happened. 
because only a witch can kill a witch. Oh, interesting. Uh, it was fun. I like. Right? I mean, I, you feel bad liking the scene, but you're just but like. But it's still great. But you're like, wait, how's this gonna? Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. did do that. Yes, and you just like turn it around. Yes. It's like oh, okay, and pull it back. <laughs> I thought it was a, a wonderful moment in 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 our show, and and oh. they they played it wonderfully. Yeah. Actually, here's a question that you could answer, and I mean, you might know the answer, okay. but um, Amanda in the chat said, "Do you think Dorothy is always thinking for herself, or via the jewels of the East? Like, as in, are the gauntlets affecting?" Her actions. Oh, oh wow, oh. that's a really, really good question. Um, I wish Dorothy was here to answer that for you. Um, my take on it is that Dorothy thinks for herself and therefore is in control of her gauntlets. But if Audrey was here, she she might have a different take, and and I respectfully, mm. you know, go and say whatever she says. That's it. <laughs> but mm. that would be my take on the outside from it. So now, while well, we get the season finale airing uh, this coming Friday, mm -hmm. uh, for this, what are you doing in the meantime here? Um, right now, I'm filming a show called Counterpart um, for Stars with J.K. Simmons in the lead, um, and yeah, it's a it's a really great show. It's a it's kind of like a Cold War espionage a, a mm. thriller, except that it's not happening in the Cold War, but it's happening between two Earths. Oh, so interesting. The Earth hmm. got. Uh, replicated like 30 years ago after some kind of uh, seismic event and uh, there's a little bit of a cold war going on between the two planets and in each <laughs> world there's a counterpart so there's somebody in the other world that looks just like you same fingerprint uh, oh, same sorry everything <laughs> oh, sorry, and buddy. so so yeah I wouldn't say that <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little bit of a cold war going on between the two worlds and, and it's a it's a very exciting show that sounds awesome. I could imagine, uh, you know, swapping places with each other to learn intel, things well, like that. Well, yeah, there's, again, I can't say too much right now because we're still shooting it and, and I don't know what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, I think it's, I, I um, when I read the script, I immediately fell in love with the project and I thought this was a really well-crafted script and, and the people that are involved are really lovely and wonderful and... I get to shoot it here in LA and then go to Berlin. So, nice. it, you know, it, it, a lot of times, a lot of perks of the job is the traveling and, and being able to go to Berlin again is, mm -hmm. is always good. You know, one, of my, <laughs> one of my favorite cities right there. So, um, and to be able to stay in LA and, and, and spend time with my friends and family here is great. And work with J.K. Simmons, another great actor. Wonderful. I mean, I'm actually really lucky when it comes to, you know, the people that I've been able to work with. And, and J.K. is everything you'd want him to be. He's a, a class act an absolute class act a real gentleman and I, I love working with him can oh. you say the name of it again people are like what is it what show <laughs> counterpart it counterpart. sounds awesome yes so, it looks so we're still that. shooting it so it'll still be a while before that's out oh I guess I mean, I, I, with a promise like that I'm sure Comic Con and stuff like that will start seeing some presence right there about oh, like teasing the show sure, and stuff for sure for sure yeah Nice. That's awesome. So, uh, well, I know as before the show was talking about, uh, we're going to say, I plug your handles one more time. I know you're, you're you're trying to work on your Twitter game. Your oh, my God. Gosh, what do, I, what do I say now? How does this work? Just say where people find you online. Oh, okay. Like, so so you can, you can is... find me on Hamada 37 on Twitter, and you can find me on Facebook. Facebook? Am I on Facebook? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> okay. You see, I'm not allowed to talk on my own. I have people tell me what That's to right. say because it's very dangerous when I start speaking for myself. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody who's ever listening to this, follow them there on Twitter. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Boost Thank those you. numbers. Boost those numbers. Hey, yes. Hey, yes. Hey, thank you. Well, you're new to Twitter. You're a Twitter baby, so I'm it's okay. A, I'm, I am I'm a Twitter baby, Twitter infant. There okay. you go. Let's go. I'm an infant. Right. I am still wearing my diapers <laughs> and, and waiting for somebody to hand me the bottle. So Let's get them to be a, a, a Twitter preschooler by the end of the tonight. Let's try to do that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that has been Mito Hamada. Of course, this is a finale of Emerald City is happening this coming Friday on NBC. We'll be back next Sunday night to break it all down. Mm. Yes. But if you want to continue the conversation with us even after the show is over, you can like us on Facebook, give us those five stars on iTunes, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and of course, uh, you know, thanks for everybody hopping in the chat. Mm -hmm. Make sure you comment below because Carrie Lane has got that hot cup of tea that she's going to want to <laughs> hey, nice. drink as, as she reads those chat comments you know later. What? I did it last I was going through all the comments on my after show. So, yeah, I know, guys, we had a lot to cover in this episode, and we had an awesome guest, which I personally, I love the guests a little bit more than the after shows because then we get the insight, guys. Come on. So if you do want to talk more about the show, leave comments down below. And I, I know how you all talk amongst each other, which is great, and we will 
comment back as well. And, and keep watching the show. Exactly. Keep the watching finale. the show. We yes. need you to watch that finale. Trust me, you'll want to see it. Tweet about it too, you know. And yes. uh, you guys can find me online at Carrie D. Lane. That's K-A-R-I-D-L-A-N-E. Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Happy Go Jackie. Uh, Mito, thanks again. Seriously, thank it was you. so awesome to have you in thank studio. You. That, that yeah. flew thank by. You. That time flew by. Oh, there you go. It's Look, time flies over? when you're having fun, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see you back here next Sunday night as we break down the season finale <laughs> of Emerald thanks. City Radio right and After Buzz TV. Thank you. Yeah. Follow Mito. Follow yes. Mito. Follow, follow me. Follow. Follow. Or From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.